Oh, you don't leave it short. Oh. It's one rule in golf. Don't leave the birdie putt short. Appreciate it. All right, guys. Welcome to the prototyping lab for golf ball cores. And uh, Eric Loper's here as well. Like Eric runs golf ball R&D. He's going to help us uh, with explaining a little bit about what's going on. So one of the things that we do is we start out uh, with this material, synthetic rubber. And um, it's pretty useless to us in that condition. So it's our job to put other additives inside of that material uh, in a recipe that when, uh, when we cure it eventually at the end and turn it into the core of a golf ball, it's gonna help us control uh, the speed of the golf ball and the spin of the golf ball, the feel of the golf ball. So some really important uh, parameters that, uh, that determine uh, how a golf ball should play and, and how we get the most out of performance. Yeah. Um, when you look at the inside of a golf ball, this is the ball you're playing the Chrome Soft X, yes, right? Yes, sir. So the green portion here is the, the core. And um, in this lab, this is where we make that core. In the Chrome Soft, uh, Chrome Soft, we use a dual core. We, there's an inner core and there's an outer core. But back to the ball that you play, it's, uh, we have a, a core specifically designed for feel, speed, and spin characteristics. And we use a two-row mill and it really helps incorporate the mixing. Right. And so that machine right here is the two-row mill. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna turn it on. And we're gonna, this is already a pre-mixed uh, piece of material but we're gonna get it on the mill and we're gonna soften it up. You can see the material starting. You can see when you look inside, you can see the material kind of working itself between the two rolls. That's, a, that's an indication that it's, that it's mixing. And since this is all one color, it means that all the ingredients have been thoroughly mixed into uh, the base rubber. And then what we do is we use this knife, which is sharp. And what we do is we keep, try to keep our our hands below the midpoint of the mill or the roll. Yeah. So down here. And what we'll do is we'll just start cutting. We'll do something like that. So let's have you try it. Let's have you give it a go. This is going to be your knife. All right. And keep Stand your hands low. low. Yeah, keep it low. And tilt the knife more vertical. This like way? that. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Ah, I forgot to catch it though. Gotta give it a little up. If you want a good golf ball. Uh-oh. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ah. That was <laughs> nice and warm though. Sure, try that. You wanna try that? Woo! Woo! That boy yeah. nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, so one of our technicians' uh, wives actually made that for you, yes. knowing that you're coming today. So Amazing. you're welcome. It's your graduation present. <laughs> After we sheet it out, we want to roll these up into uh, cylinders so we can put them into the press. So that's a, that's a hot press. Those are hot cavities. Uh, specific diameter, and that material is, it's first gonna be formed. Do you see how it gets formed there? Yeah. It's gonna form into the sphere, and then the heat kicks off the reaction. So it goes from that soft, pliable material to something that's uh, more rigid and, and more, um, more resilient. When these things are done, they'll, they'll come out looking a bit like this. Should we go and uh, look yeah. at some other parts of the golf ball as well? We can go to the lab next door and it's gonna focus more on the, the cover material. Okay. So uh, we saw how we make the core of the golf ball. This is all about how we make the cover of the golf ball. So what we want uh, the cover to do is control uh, the spin of the ball, particularly when you get near the green. Uh, it's uh, very important for the feel of the golf ball when you're near the green as well. And also the cover has the aerodynamic pattern in it. So we do all of that uh, in this machine here. We're injection molding urethane material on top of that core that we made earlier. Inside there, we have these, these cavities. And 
This is, if you like, this is the reverse of half of a golf ball. And there are eight of these uh, inside of the bottom half and eight in the top half. And you can see how the cores of the golf ball are loaded in, the tool closes, and then from this side, the white material, the urethane material has been injected into this tool around that core so that it takes on this pattern. Then this is a sort of example, if we, if we started the injection and then stopped it before it was finished, you can see how this is the path that the material is taken through that tool to get to the ball, and then it floods north and south from the equator there. The lot, the lot that went into it took us about four years to develop this technique. Stuff you don't think about when you're playing golf, right? <laughs> you want to see these things fly? All right, let's go. All right, guys, this is a totally different type of lab than the ones we were in before. Uh, here, we're now testing golf balls, and specifically golf ball aerodynamics. So this is an indoor test range. Uh, the idea is that we can fly golf balls in here in very controlled circumstances, uh, make really detailed measurements to really understand uh, the elements of that surface of the golf ball that we molded earlier and how it affects the way a golf ball will fly. We have a, a ball launcher right here, so it has a air cannon that feeds those uh, those wheels there and those wheels have belts between them and the combination of the air cannon and the the belts will give us the speed and the spin of the ball and the control of that so that we can tell exactly how it's flying uh, we can uh, look at the details of the aerodynamic performance of the ball and make sure that it's optimized for the type of golfer that we're talking about what we want to do is give you a demonstration of this. Yes. And you guys are yes, going to get up close and personal. So I can't wait to see this. <laughs> OK, should we go inside the lab and just take a quick look? Yeah, or take a quick look at how we, how we handle all of that. <laughs> we capture this information here through all of these cameras. And with the position and backspin, we're able to calculate through our software, the coefficient of drag and lift mm -hmm. for that one condition. And so then what we wanna do for like your ball flight, we'll stitch together this condition plus a multitude of other conditions so that we could actually say for your launch condition with this different dimple pattern, this is how far the ball is gonna go. And so what that's good for is not only determining what ball is better for you, but also for designing new dimple patterns. Right. And, you know, and ultimately um, matching launch conditions with your spin characteristics to get the ball to do what you want it to do. Lower, higher, more distance off the driver is usually a good thing. But with your irons, how can you make it more controllable more and yeah. minimize the dispersion? Yeah. Like how, where's the, the range on that in terms of how uh, unique they can get for each ball? Like they Very unique. I mean, you could, you could if, I mean, if we wanted to have a ball be significantly lower and hit the ground, not carrying no, quite as yeah. far, but roll out more and to the point where it's creating more lift and flying too high. So there's this Is multitude the, the of si ranges. I know it's a combination of a lot, probably a lot of things, but the size of them, the, the, the depth or shape and all. Yeah, like the shape. So we have hex geometry. Yeah. And, and so we can manipulate uh, the tube width or the, the, the width of the, the hex and the depth and the edge angles to achieve really ultimately lower drag yeah. off the tee is always good, right? And then and balancing the lift uh, profile to give you a trajectory that you want. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, you guys can uh, come on here and you'll see what, uh, what we've got that's interesting. So, um, we have our latest uh, measurement tool here. 
Uh, it's called our micro scanner. And what it's going to do is shine uh, millions of points of blue laser light onto the inside of our new driver in order to confirm that the, uh, the thickness of the face that we've designed using our AI tools is actually what we wanted. And we see the output from it on the screen here where we get really incredible detail in the uh, thickness measurement that we've made across millions of points inside the head. Instead of having just a few points, the level at which we're designing now uh, requires this degree of precision to make sure that the face and the new jailbreak system are exactly as we designed and will deliver the performance benefits. Okay, so we're in the Odyssey Putter Lab, another part of R&D, and the main purpose here is to test out prototype putters uh, in a very controlled setting. So we've got uh, a robot uh, putting machine here, and we have um, measurement equipment uh, that can uh, measure uh, things about putts in, in a lot of detail. And uh, Patrick Dawson is here. Patrick runs our putter R&D team, and he's going to demonstrate the, what the robot can do, talk a little bit about some of the parameters that, that we measure and we find important in, uh, in putter design and in trying to coach players into being pet better putters as well. So Patrick. Yeah, here we go. So we'll, go, we'll just start rolling a few down the range. Um, we're using Quintic right now to kind of uh, to measure the launch conditions of the putter along with the ball. And so here we go. It's simple, just uh, not too exciting, but rolls it down and hopefully I did it right so it almost makes the putt. Um, but some of the things that we'll start to look for as Quintic starts to calculate all the data, uh, we'll look for what's its impact speed, angle of attack, shaft angle, all those kinds of things. Let me grab some so I can actually point to it up there. Um, yeah. So what we were trying to do is get a shaft forward lean of about a degree, attack angle of no more than two degrees, so I've not set this up quite right. Um, but And then the other things we're looking for is forward spin here, top spin, mm -hmm. and then a decent you know, path into out, kind of just repeatability. So what we can look at, watch this, is the uh, impact speed. So I'll, hit a, I'll roll a couple more putts, mm -hmm. and then we can kind of watch that number not change that much in theory and hopefully i'll start the robot will start making some putts you can see that some of these numbers that we're talking about are pretty small numbers that are make the difference between uh making the putt burning the edge and outright missing um, so you know, we have to have a high degree of accuracy in terms of the machine and in the measurements uh, because it is small <laughs> margins <laughs> that, uh, that are the difference You don't leave it oh. short. <laughs> One rule in golf, don't <laughs> leave the birdie putt short. Oh. 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 All right, guys, awesome time here. Thanks very much for, your, for coming and seeing us. Uh, that's just a little flavor of what we do here in R&D. Hope you got a bit of an idea what it takes to make some of the products that you'll be out using on the course. Yes, Thanks sir. for coming. Appreciate you having us. Learned a lot. Tell you All that right. Much. Tell you that much. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks, guys.